Hello, I'm Ricky. Welcome back to Ricky Reviews. Ricky Reacts. Ricky just watches stuff and say things. Anyway, we're going to do something completely different today. You all remember. You all remember. You all remember geography now. We've been watching a couple of videos. Indonesia and uh, etc. etc. I can't remember. I, I have really bad memory. But we're going to watch something that is going to be really fun for me to do. And it's, of course, Geography Now, Sweden. It's over a half an hour long, so it might be kind of a kind of long. But we're going to do it as we always do. Halfway through, still here, right? Still here. If you're our channel member, you can use the emoji still here. And by the end of the video, close to it, we do that again. But this time, still here, Recky. Let's do this. Oh, by the way, smack the like and, of course, hit subscribe. While I am debunking Geography Now Sweden, a big, big thank you to my channel members and my Patreon. Thank you so much. A big shout out to the Supreme Tier Donators over by Patreon and on YouTube. And a personal shout out to the ultimate supporter, Southern Mom. Thank you so much. Incredible support. All right. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Sweden. Sweden. I don't have to give much of an introduction. I'm sure you've all heard of this one. We've scaled the treacherous Danish peaks of Mullehoy, stomached the ammonia-flavored Icelandic Haukark, <laughs> and our wallets were viciously attacked by Norwegian prices of anything. But now it's time. Welcome to the final boss of Scandinavia, Sweden. Ooh, it's hot. I'm all hot and sweaty right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know the drill. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, kick it. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, uh, Noah's back, by the way. Here we are. Yep. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Barbs. Get a Geography Now t-shirt or Geography Now merch at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. Anyway, all right, you guys, this is it. Our last Nordic country. But what about- Your constituent. But what about- You're an unincorporated territory. But what about me? We already did your video, I even went there. Okay, anyway, I actually wanted to go to Sweden for this episode, but at the last minute, Sweden was like, dude, we're gonna close off our borders to anyone outside the EU. But you know how it goes. The show must go on. And if we can't go to Sweden, we're gonna bring Sweden to us. And in the best possible way, with real Swedish people. And I mean like real Swedes, not those fifth generation Minnesota Swedes that eat lutefisk once a year. And so with that, say hi. Ugh, lutefisk. Lutefisk. It's, lut it's just lut lutefisk or lutefisk. It's kind of a nasty uh, fish. You eat it with mustard on Christmas. We used to do that when my grandma was alive. We don't do that today. Hi to Jonas and Carolina. Come on in. Woo! Oh, yeah, I got two Swedes. So you guys are the real deal, Swedish, straight up, right? I uh, I was born in Sweden and lived there for ten years, and then my mom moved me to the enemy to Norway. Oh, so you're yeah. half Norwegian, okay? Yeah. And I'm from Skåne, so we might have some angry people out there claiming I'm Danish. <laughs> no, 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 no. But um, it was I'm, LA. I'm you guys were the best Sweden. I could find. <laughs> so uh, anything you want to say to the Swedish subscribers? Nah, I'm excited for you guys to uh, learn more about your country, <laughs> our country. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, where are you guys from? I'm from Helsingborg. Ooh. And I'm from Chalestel. Now, there are many ways you can divide Europe. You know, like you have the Mediterranean. Hey, tomato for sale, tomato. The post-Iron Curtain. <laughs> the Balkans. <laughs> but everyone knows, the further north you go, things start to get scan delicious and sweet. <laughs> Anyway, lots to cover, let's look at the globe. Sweden lies in the region of Scandinavia in Northern Europe and is the largest of all the Scandinavian countries, the fifth largest in Europe and third in the EU. The country is bordered by Norway to the west and north and Finland in the northeast, separated by the Gulf of Bothnia otherwise between them. In this gulf, you can also find Sweden's two largest islands, Öland and Gotland. Otherwise in the south, the only other physical connection they technically have is with Denmark via the partially submerged and partially above ground Öresund Bridge that connects Malmö, the third largest city, to Copenhagen. I'm trying my best with these pronunciations, bear with me. The country's job. largest city though and capital is Stockholm, located on the east side of the country, and it actually sits- A lot, look at this. This is just amazing. 
archipelago like insane. It's on 14 islands with over 50 bridges at the drainage of Lake Malaren with over 20 lakes and countless streams. This is why it is sometimes referred to as the Venice of the North. The country is divided into 21 counties, each abbreviated by a letter or double letter known as a country code for the EU statistical. Yeah, I'm down here, uh, Scona or Scania down here system though the counties are grouped into eight riksomroden or national areas to address things like population data and so forth but they in themselves do not have any administrative function otherwise if you ask a swede they might revert back to the three traditional lands of sweden norland sveland and jotland technically yeah. there was a fourth Österland, which was basically south finland when it was under swedish rule but that term hasn't been used since the 15th century anyway stockholm is also the central hub of economic activity and transportation the largest and busiest airport is stockholm's arlanda international National, which, like so many European international airports, is located super far from the actual city. It takes a 20-minute mm -hmm. express train or 45-minute car drive to downtown. The second largest airport, Lanfeta International, is located in the second largest city, Yetabori, or Gothenburg, for the misguided English speakers. Yetabori actually also has the largest shipping port in the country and the largest in all of Scandinavia, taking in about a third of all Swedish trade activity. It lies on the Kattegat and Skagerrak, the shallow straits that open up Scandinavia to the rest of the world. With other major cities like Oslo and Copenhagen, Copenhagen within radius. Here, about 70% of all industry and commerce through Scandinavia happens. It's a busy spot to say the least. Finally, the country has quite an organized system of roads and rail networks that more or less parallel each other. There are two main north-south highways, the E4 that hugs the entire Bothnia coast, and the E45, the longest road in the country that goes along the mountains inland e from Yetabori all the way to the border with Finland in the north. Also, it's important to note. Well, that's E6 too, goes from Stockholm to uh, Oslo, I think. That Sweden claims to have the most islands out of any other country in the world, at over 260,000. In any case, Sweden's domain wasn't always confined to these borders. For starters, Sweden, being Scandinavian, obviously have Viking history. If you know anything about Vikings, you'll know that they went places. They were literally in the Americas 500 years before Christopher Columbus. And when they couldn't conquer an area, they still left their mark somehow. Even the Hagia Sophia in Turkey has runic inscriptions hidden on it. It was like Viking graffiti, like a Vikings were here. On top of that, in the 1600s, Sweden started to become a European powerhouse and like many other countries, took an attempt at settling and colonizing places outside of Europe. At one point, Sweden had fortresses and colonies in the Americas, Africa, mostly in what now is Ghana. Further, which it's more, within Sweden, you even have a few micro nations. We don't have time to get into each of them, but uh, they're pretty interesting. One of them was made as a protest by an artist to protect those wooden sculptures. Anyway, the developmental structure behind Sweden oh, yeah. has like it's just a cultural bullcrap but a history behind it like Visby on Gotland Island probably the best preserved medieval city in Scandinavia the old town Stockholm neighborhood of Gamla Stan was built as a fortress to protect against pirates later on one of your kings would actually become a pirate but that's another story in fact the country has 15 UNESCO heritage sites and actually oh 15 holy actually here's fellow geography Rebecca to explain a little bit more about the top notable sites of Sweden Rebecca take it away hi everyone my name's Rebecca and if you're ever in Sweden here are some of the most notable sites. There are plenty of notable castles, fortresses and cathedrals such as Drottningholm Castle, Gripsholm Castle, Örebro Castle, Visby Town Wall, Uppsala Cathedral and St. Mary's Cathedral. Sweden also has the highest concentration of rune stones in the world with the most famous one being Rökstena. There's also many historical Viking sites such as Birka Viking Village, Trelleborgen, Old Uppsala and Alestena. If you're looking for more excitement, check out the only thing I've seen is all a stamma. It's like a bunch of rocks that some guys in the Viking Age just randomly put there. Yeah. Yeah. The theme parks Liseberg, Gröna Lund, and Skara Sommarland. Notable museums in Sweden are the Vasa Museum, Abba Museum, Fotografiska, and the Museum of Natural History. In Stockholm, you can find the newly renamed Avicii Arena. It also acts as the sun in the largest scale model of our solar system. Thank you, and I hope you come to visit Sweden someday. Thank you, Rebecca. Speaking of Swedish places, like other Nordic countries, we have Allemansrätten, which is the legal right to roam anywhere in nature. Have you guys ever taken advantage of that Alamelle Stratton thing. <laughs> nice. I mean, you just like pick berries and like, hey, hey. Um, yeah, I mean, most places are owned by the country, so you're allowed to be there. Okay, so Alamelle uh, then it's all man's right. Basically, that's how you pronounce it. And that it basically means that I can pick berries, apples, uh, camp, walk, hike, everywhere, including people's own land 
However, there is a law saying that you cannot get close too close to buildings that is habitated or people actually living in them. That's illegal. You're not allowed to do that. But let's say a farmer owns uh, a big, big land. I can walk across it. I can camp. I can do pretty much whatever I want. Of course, you cannot chop down trees and, and cracking branches and acting like a douche. But you can. You can even tent on it for one day, for one night. And you have to move on. Can you just, like, walk in someone's backyard and be like, hey? No. 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 All the <laughs> no. It has <laughs> to be public not. land. Well, speaking of roaming no, in nature, not, there's... No, 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 no. It doesn't have to be public land. It could be owned by anyone. Alamanzaretan gives you the right to go all the way through his lands, but you have to be careful doing it. You cannot cause any damage. Lots to explore in Sweden. Which brings us to... Now, in the Nordics, each country kind of has their own trademark physical trait. You know, Norway has the mountains and fjords. Denmark has the flat grassy farms. Finland is the land of lakes. And Iceland is basically just one big volcano. And yeah. then you get to Sweden and it's like a little bit of everything. Yes, there's even a small sand volcano in Simisramn. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sweden lies on the Scandinavian peninsula of Northern Europe, shared with Norway, on the east side of the Scandinavian mountain chain that separates them. Here you can also find the tallest peak, Kepnekaise, in the far north. This means that Sweden gets most of its river runoff from the mountains that mostly flow down into the Gulf of Bothnia, and the longest river shared with Finland being the Torne or Tornio River. The longest river fully within Sweden, though, being the Dolelvin River. Amongst these rivers is an abundance of lakes and ponds peppering the flatter hilly valleys below. The largest of these lakes being Vernen and Vettern in the south. The reason Sweden has so many of these pockety lake zones and eroded rivets is because they sit on a post-glacial rebound zone. Basically, during the Ice Age, all this land was crushed by heavy ice. But after the ice melt, like a sponge, Sweden started to slowly spring back up again. This means every year Sweden recovers on average about 4 millimeters of land from the sea. In some places, even more. This is why you might see extended piers from old homes that once used to be situated on the shore. The country has four general oh, climate cool. zones, the oceanic zone, in the south by the Baltic Sea. This is also where most of the agriculture is situated. The continental zone is in the middle part of the country. And finally, the subarctic in the north just above that. These areas have the highest forest concentration in the country. Also, the peaks of the mountains are classified as tundra. The top 15% of Sweden lies just north of the Arctic Circle where the coldest temperatures and highest snowfall happens. Otherwise, in the south, they might not even get any snow at all in the winter. Just cold, depressing rain. Number yeah, I said it. He said it. It's really depressing. They say it's gonna come some snow, but it's all raining. Damn. Numbers fluctuate depending on which source you study, but somewhere around or above 60% of the country is forested, making it the second most forested country in Europe after Holy. Finland. It's also important to note that Sweden has April weather, or April weather, in which, uh, yeah. well, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. 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 Pretty much anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the sun is finally out after six months of darkness. Yeah. So clothes come off. Mm -hmm. We sit in the sun. Oh, whenever you see a sweet too, expect this <laughs> facing the sun, eyes closed. And then all of a sudden a storm hits or <laughs> snow comes or... Out of nowhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere. The interesting thing, though, is that Sweden in the past was kind of not much like what they are today. In fact, at the beginning of the 20th century, much of Scandinavia was struggling with widespread poverty. However, much like Germany's Wirtschaftswunder, they had the Rekord Orem, in which Sweden's economy bursted with now industries and innovation. And today you have the largest economy and most powerful nation in Northern Europe. To explain a little bit more on the way Sweden takes what it has and flourishes, here's Noah! He's back! Well, here we are. Once again, let's get to it. Despite having lush green lands, only about 7% of the country is arable. Therefore, agriculture isn't exactly their main focus. Today, much of Sweden's open market economy is heavily based on exports, especially in the timber and mining sectors. The largest mine in Kiruna is actually so large they are currently in the process of moving the town and residents to make more mines. Yeah, that's actually true. And it was a uh, uh, talk of the, the year uh, when this big company that has actually owned this a mine was telling the town you guys got to move because we're gonna we're gonna make the hole even bigger and if if you i think you can google map it um the kirana uh i don't know quarry 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 whatever you want to call it it's really close to the to the town so they actually i can't really remember where they left off 
but they actually moving for the sake of the mine. This is how Sweden in the 21st century became the world's sixth largest iron ore exporter and third largest stainless steel exporter. And of course, lumber. The Swedes love trees so much that a long time ago during famine times, they would put crushed tree bark into their rye bread, which was actually good because the bark had lots of minerals and I fiber. Go figure. The lumber industry plays a huge role in their world-renowned furniture commerce. We've all heard of IKEA having over 450 stores in about 60 countries. IKEA. They actually studied that in design school. Is that but true, Noah? That is true. Not that I do it, but here we are. You might be familiar with other Swedish companies like Electrolux, Ericsson, H&M, Saab, Scania, Spotify, and of course the largest domestic company and only one on the Fortune 500 list, Volvo. Great cars, I might say. And oh, that, that is, is uh, that is, that is that. Until we meet again. Thank you, Noah. Now going off of business talk, domestically, Sweden does have a pretty complex system when it comes to taxes that plays into their fiscal structure. As of 2021, their individual tax rates range from about 32% to 52% based on income bracket margins. And that's not even including other factors like corporate value added taxes, which can be up to 25%. When you add them, you get the second highest total tax revenue behind Denmark as a share of its country's income. Yeah. That okay, so the, this is, of course, people talk about, we got socialism in Sweden. Uh, it's not working. The only thing that is it, it's, it's positive about it is that I can go to the doctors and I have to pay 30 bucks, 20, 25, 30 bucks for me to meet a doctor. And if the doctor tells me that I have to get a surgery, I don't pay anything out. He just sends me to the hospital. They give me the surgery and out I go. And if I stay over the night at the hospital, I don't pay anything. But if I want a phone, I don't think that's a thing anymore. But back in the days, you could actually have a phone. You can plug it in, then you have to pay, I, thought it, I think it was like 10 bucks a night. Today, we, all we have is our cell phones, of course. So we don't need that anymore. So basically, I live in the hospital for free. All I did was pay 30 bucks to the doctor. That's, uh, you guys kind of have high taxes. Well, we also have healthcare. <laughs> And good schools. And good and roads. Get... And of course, uh, education in Sweden is basically free. Free food, roads. <laughs> <laughs> roads. In any case, another interesting thing about Sweden is its wildlife. And with that, here's Gary Harlow to explain. Guess who's back? As a Nordic country, Sweden is obviously a place full of cold climate animals. In fact, they have the third highest number of their national animal, the moose, or the Eurasian elk, after Russia and Canada. There's so many moose that they actually have to hunt around 100,000 every year to maintain population control. Killing your national animal because there's too many? Go Sweden! There are 30 national parks and nature prediction zones, and the most famous being in the North Lapland area, where reindeer, muxox, grey owls and brown bears can be spotted roaming freely. Fun fact, reindeer have climate adapted feet in the summer. Their spongy foot pads are more exposed which help with traction. But in winter, the pads shrink and the hoof is exposed which helps cut into the ice when moving. Finally, Sweden is one of the few places in the world with a real taxidermized whale. The mouth used to be open for visitors to walk into but it was closed off to the public because a couple was caught having sex in it speaking of <sighs> i knew it was coming it's always sex dude i'm just saying of making babies i made one myself here's a photo of my daughter she's beautiful thank you gary yeah i remember the first meal i had in sweden was reindeer meatballs you guys love your reindeer what's your favorite dishes in sweden it probably is reindeer meatballs <laughs> yeah i would say salmon grilled in the summer oven baked in the winter oh yeah and you guys know fika right yeah fika it's funny because coffee was actually banned from sweden like five times in the 1700s but that's another story to explain a little bit more about fika and the food here's johan and rikard all right guys well this is a uh, fika and to explain here is johan so in sweden fika is a huge tradition it's something you do daily it's a part of a workday break where you kind of like gather you sit down and you have coffee this Historically, it's been that seven types of cookies minimum, plus cinnamon rolls and cardamom rolls. We take this serious. We take this serious. Oh, by the way, it's uh, October 4, and that means uh, it's Cinnamon Bun Day. <laughs>
It is. And um, then pastries such as princess cakes and other things. Every day, but not necessarily this many sorts. I wanted to give you a cross section of what it could be. So, and then the most famous on the bottom would be the princess, princess cake. Yes. So if I'm gonna try some, I have to have some marzipan. So many layers. I know. Wow. And Hello there, my name is Dick and I'm here to talk about some of the foods! We have kroppkakor or palt, depending on if you are from the north or the south. Sill, or as you will call it, herring. We have reindeer, pea soup, cauliflower soup, surströmming or sour herring, but eat at your own risk. All yeah. of this of foods can be eaten at the traditional sm- Oh my god, you, gotta, you guys gonna love a smur- Smurgosborg. No, sm why is it saying Smurgosborg? It's bored. Smurgus board, not Borg. Smurgus board or smur Smurgus board, basically a Swedish yeah, buffet. Yeah. We also have Kallus or Charles caviar. It's a Swedish style of smoked cod roe, not that super expensive. And of course we have Knäckebrö! And the traditional national dish of Sweden, Swedish tacos. Over to some drinks from Sweden. We have Aquavit or flavored caraway liquor. Julmus and Christmas and Poskmusk. Most on Easter, uh, glug. We have glug, and of course my personal favorite, punch. It's made by the mixing of spirits like arak brandy or rum with arak tea. With it's delicious. Some sugar and water. Very sweet, very strong, and very nice. Thank you, Johan and Ricard. Oh yeah, you guys also have something about like the alcohol in Sweden. Can you guys explain what is that? Mm, it's called the Systembolaget, which is like the Swedish system of selling heavily regulated alcohol at state-owned stores at set prices. So you have you can be 18 and go to a bar to get liquor, but you can't buy it at a store no. until you're 20. Correct. Logic. You know? Logic. Yeah. Yeah, the that's way it that goes is that yeah, Norwegian yeah. people go to Sweden to buy alcohol. Swedish people go to Denmark to buy alcohol, and Danish people go to Germany to buy alcohol. You guys all have a system. Yeah, no, we have a system family. for cheap alcohol. <laughs> so this is probably a bunch of 16 year olds taking a ferry over to Denmark. Okay. The ferry itself is a party. Yes. I've been on that ferry. <laughs> I've been on that ferry with my mom between Helsingborg and Helsingor. Oh, and a funny story, I was told uh, when potatoes were introduced to Sweden, it was kind of like this. What are these things? Well, obviously, liquor. And that's how Aquavit was born. So, <laughs> um, what's that thing about candy on Saturdays? Explain, Carolina. Uh, you get to eat candy on Saturdays. Yeah. So when we were kids, we got a little amount of money. We got to run through the store and pick our favorite yeah. candy. And then um, it's definitely a Swedish thing. I'm just saying. All right, we're halfway through now. You gotta tell me. Still here. If you are a member, you can use the emoji still here. If you're not, just write still here. It's amazing. Best in the world. I mean, yes, good ingredients. When you come here, pretty much half the ingredients of American candy is illegal in Sweden. So. <laughs> yeah, we do that. Well, on that note, we've talked a lot about some of your small little traditions. Let's explain a little bit more in. I asked geography Johan to explain Swedish people and what they're like, and he described it as something like this. A Swedish person is pretty reserved. They will definitely help you, but probably won't take the immediate initiative to help you. The way I see it, it's kind of like, Oh no, I hope I don't fall. Oh, I'm falling. Oh, and I dropped my wallet. And I got the results of the test back. I definitely have breast cancer. Can help me or... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Was I supposed to help you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, god. Yeah. 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 Also, what are some other kind of taboos? In yeah, unfortunately, that is very true. In Swedish culture, what do you think? I guess uh, when you get on the bus, if there is another available seat and you go sit next to someone, don't do that. No. Just don't. And don't have too much eye contact in general. No. Preferably not. No, stop Explain, looking. what is uh, logo mignante law? It's a law that basically tells you that don't think you're better than anyone. It's like, don't tell people that you got good grades. Just get them and move on. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's a, a very effective law in Sweden. Yeah called Jantelagen, or the law of Janta. No better than me. Hush now. Can it? But still, you know, kind of let it, them see it on Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely based on status. Lagom is this word that does not exist in English, and it basically means not too much, not too little, just the perfect amount. I would say that a Swedish person is generally intelligent. Is that- You know when you eat and you feel like you're not hungry, you're not full. You're logum. It's perfect. 
Can't fool myself saying that. Nah, it's just a result of uh, our educational system. <laughs> That's right. But part of your culture, uh, Yantalong, you're not allowed to do that, right? Well, we're not allowed to brag, <laughs> no, but now we're in America, so... I'll... Well, that was a discussion. Any case, let's break down the population of Sweden. Sweden has a population of about 10.25 million and has one of the oldest populations in the world at about 41 years of age on average. About 75% of the country claims to be ethnically Swedish, and this is where things get a little complicated. For the remaining 25%, the Swedish government doesn't have any official statistical data on foreign backgrounds, but what we do know is that of these people, about 2 million of them were born abroad and about 600,000 were born in Sweden as second generation with foreign parents. We also know that as of 2020, due to the refugee crisis, the largest immigrant communities had origins mostly from Syria and Iraq, which surpassed Finland and Poland in the 21st century for the largest foreign born communities. Yeah, we'll talk about the refugee thing later, but in the meantime... Sweden uses the Swedish krona as its currency. And we use the type C and F plug outlets, and we drive on the right side of the road. But we used to drive on the left side until September 3rd, 1967. Yeah, you guys saw uh, one of the posts I did on the community, uh, where you can actually see the chaos that day that changed from left to right. Uh, this was, of course, a referendum. And uh, the funny thing is, if I remember this correctly, the referendum said, I mean, referendum of people had to vote, and the vote said, keep left. But the government changed it anyway. I'm not 100% sure that, but if that is actually what happened, but I'm fairly sure. When the Högertrafiksomläggningen was instituted. And it was a crazy time. People were all confused yep. and jamming yep. into each other. It In Sweden, chaos. the official language is, shocker, Swedish! But the funny thing is, even though Swedish originated and has pretty much always been spoken natively in Sweden, Swedish actually only became official in the country in 2009. Yeah. Yeah, they kept kind of arguing about it. It was like, no, it might be seen as more difficult for international issues. It might be seen as discriminatory, maybe, for those who don't speak Swedish. God! So let's break this down. The country is called Sweden. What the f do you think people should speak in Sweden? And that's how Swedish became the official language of Sweden. We've explained this before, but the three Scandinavian countries can all more or less understand each other. If you learn one, you can pretty much yeah. kind of communicate with the others. I it's know. just, you know, when they hear Danish, it's like, Oh, hey, Denmark. <laughs> Interesting. And the interesting thing yeah. is that the Swedish language has pitches. Here's geography Marcus to explain a little bit more. So yeah, Swedish is a very hard language to learn. We also have a pitch dialect. Some words look and are uh, pronounced exactly the same, but have different meanings. So the word plan, uh, it can mean a plan, like having a great plan. It can also mean a uh, pitch, like a football pitch. Football's plan, a banan. Uh, which means banana, but if you pronounce it banan, it means the track. Thank you, Marcus. In any yeah, case, it's really confusing. On top of that, there are also five protected languages in Sweden. Finnish, Menkal, Sami, Romani, and Yiddish. Also, Sweden has a lot of regional accents. If she spoke her native language right now, or... <laughs> you don't native, even say dialect, you say language. <laughs> native dialect, I wouldn't understand a word. Say the most difficult uh, southern Swedish thing you can say. Okay, this is not my accent, okay? Disclaimer. <laughs> it is easy but difficult to drive a road. Roller coaster? Wheelbarrow, but that was really good. Right? Yeah. All right. Oh, that's the sick part. I actually knew exactly what she said. All right, we are close. I think uh, if I was to drive to Helsing Boy, where she's from, it would take me about an hour, an hour, 10 minutes, probably, just across Scania. All right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. You thought Wheelbarrow was roller coaster. <laughs> Whoa. In any case, Christianity was introduced in the 9th century. Today, most Swedes, regardless of their level of religious devotion or lack thereof, are at least registered with the Swedish Lutheran Church. And like the Danes and Norwegians, they have their confirmation ceremonies at age 14 or 15. In old times, ancient Swedes and the Norse people followed the Asatru religion. You know, where Thor, Odin, Loki, all, all of them were from. Otherwise, Sweden is a constitutional monarchy. Although they are mostly seen as just figurehead celebrities. 
liberties with almost no actual legislative power. And today, nope. the royal family is actually French descended. For what it's worth, being the largest of the Scandinavian countries, Sweden has a lot on its plate. In general, most people would say that the system works. Yes, we do have one of the highest life expectancies in the world at over 82 years. People get paid to go to schools they are accepted in. Healthcare is free for people under 18. Dental is free for anyone under 23. Otherwise, there are price caps for medical and pharmaceutical services, and they are usually cheap. However, for the population, there is a bit of a shortage in medical facilities, and like most state subsidized healthcare systems, wait times can be an issue sometimes, and they follow the 0 30 90 90 rule. This rule states that a person cannot wait more than 90 days to see a specialist and 90 days after diagnosis to receive surgery unless it is deemed an emergency. Yeah. This means that the worst case scenario, potentially, it could take almost half a year to get treated. This is one reason why one out of 10 Swedes actually prefer private insurance, which was, you know, made available in 2010 rather than relying on universal healthcare system. Otherwise, we aren't going to fully sugarcoat this episode. Everyone knows that Sweden has seen quite a few drastic changes in the past decade or so. During the 2014-15 refugee crisis, Sweden saw a wave of asylum seekers, mostly from Syria and Iraq. Obviously, this unexpected influx in such a short time, you know, barely allowing the new immigrants time to integrate, kind of played out in many ways that you know, made international news. Now, this is where the narrative kind of steps on thin ice because you want to be seen as compassionate, but you also can't avoid the fact that statistically problems that quiet Sweden had never really seen before obviously kind of started to arise. We've seen the news features, riots, multiple cities, crime rising, but at the same time, you also want to be seen as compassionate, but without sidestepping the issues. So the question was, how? Well, it's not an easy question to answer. So like, I don't know, what do you guys think of that whole situation of the drama? You can see it as either win-win or lose-lose in many ways, because if you're completely against taking in immigrants, you're basically considered a racist. And uh, if you're trying to turn a blind eye to the fact that, you know, crime has risen, a lot the last years, then that's not great either. So I think this is a fairly new problem and, and it takes some time to really figure it out. It's difficult. And so. kind of, yeah, kind of a discussion of how to help people, you know, integrate into the society. We're not helping people. We're just bringing millions of refugees without having an, any kind of plan. Uh, most of them live on welfare, of course. They're not integrated in the society. They're not learning the language. It's really, really difficult. So they choose, I'm not saying everyone, I'm saying they, they, they choose criminal life because it's quick money, especially drugs. And it turns out, well, they gang up on each other and there's basically gang wars going on. Just a couple of, uh, couple of days, one dude got shot just, uh, uh, what, just, just a couple of kilometers, not even that. Society in general. Swedish and society. I think integration is keyword. You know, half the people are going to argue for all the benefits of opening our country up and helping people, and those are huge as well. Yeah. See, this is kind of part of the complication of Sweden. There's always like a dichotomy of ethics and consequences within their story. For example, they've been neutral, or at least on paper, for 200 years, yet that neutrality has always kind of been tested throughout the time. In World War One, our choice not to intervene pretty much costed us the chance to integrate the Åland Islands. And in World War II, Sweden Sweden took like almost all of Denmark's Jewish refugees. However, they did trade with Nazi Germany and let them use the railroad. But it's like, what other choice did they have when they just witnessed and saw Denmark getting demolished and attacked and occupied in like six hours? It's like, yeah. do you stay neutral yet technically cooperate or fight back with no chance and lose everything? So many heavy choices with no simple answers. Well, that was fantastic and uplifting. In any case, <laughs> we must move on. One thing Sweden definitely does actually feel uplifted by would be their heavy, our heavy, involvement in sports. And with that, uh, Art usually fills in for the sports part, but uh, again, he's still on vacation with his family, so I don't know. Uh, Noah, why don't you fill in? All right, Noah, oh, you, got, you okay, gotta be Art okay. this time. He's gone, so, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, you missed the do, and you go too. Oh yeah, I forgot. Sorry, but sports in Sweden. Fun fact, they actually won a half medal at the 1900 Olympics, technically. They teamed up with Denmark in the tug of war event. Yes, there actually used to be a tug of war event in the Olympics. Yeah, it does sound it. pretty cool. I love why would, it. Why would you get rid of that? I go to the Olympics to do tug of war. That'd be pretty awesome. You could just be your own team, team Noah. <laughs> there are two sports that kind of originated in Sweden, brandball and floorball. Bra yeah, this is, uh, brandball is burnball. <laughs> Stupid name if we, if we translate it. It's a fun thing to do with friends, family, and work pod buddies. One ball is kind of like baseball, and floor ball is basically like hockey with a ball on the floor. So the thing about Sweden is that each of their neighbors is kind of like their biggest rivals in a certain sport. And of course, we can't mention football without mentioning their biggest player, Zlatan Ibrahimovic.
I love this guy. I've been following his curator since he was, uh, uh, he's just a couple of years younger than me. Uh, this is my God. This is uh, someone that is the most important dude in my life. And I love this guy. And when he puts his shoes up on the shelf and say, I'm not doing football anymore, it's going to be a very sad day in Ricky's home. But depending on who you ask, many people might say that ice hockey is a national sport. In 2006, they became the first and so far only team to win both tournaments in the same calendar year, That's Olympics year. and World Championships. They are part of the big six that are considered the best ice hockey teams in the world, including Canada, Czechia, Finland, Russia, and the United States. Uh, that's the sports parts. Thank you, Noah. So much culture in Sweden. Actually, if you want to learn more about it, just read uh, The Adventures of Niels. He rides a goose around Sweden and learns some life lessons along the way or something. With that, here's Random <laughs> Hannah with culture stuff. Hey guys, I'm back. Woo! In Sweden, you'll find that every region has its unique identity. For example, the Sami people of Lapland in the north, they have their reindeer herding, tents, and colt or yakti clothing. If you go to the south in Skona, though, you'll find a radically different culture of glass blowing and silversmithing, stuff like that. Of course, we don't have time to dive into all the regions, but one thing you'll realize is that they all have a traditional costume or folkdrikter. One yep. thing you will see all over Sweden is a typical redwood farmhouse. They also have the Dalahes, a wooden horse usually painted red with patterns. And speaking of iconic animals, Swedes actually like love Donald Duck even more than Mickey Mouse. And every year during Christmas they show Donald Duck and his friends wish you a Merry Christmas on the TV. Yeah. Sweden also has many notable individuals in the arts and literature department. And probably the most critically well known is Anders Zorn who is commissioned to paint numerous high profile figures. Swedes are known for their crime, fiction, drama, and literature. They love the complex, moody scenarios. Many people attribute this guy, I'm not even going to try and say his name, as the founder of modern Scandinavian crime fiction. But the number one best-selling Swedish author of all time is actually Astrid Lindgren. You've probably heard of her Pippi Longstocking series. And speaking of consumable media, if you want to learn about culture, history, and geography through film, check out Filmography Now, where we talk about people like Ingmar Berman, who is a huge influential person in the film industry, and he was from Sweden. Finally, Sweden is known for having a ton of inventions and discoveries, such as nicotine gum, the pacemaker, the three-point seatbelt, GPS, the ultrasound, dynamite, and the Celsius temperature scale. And four elements on a periodic table were named after the town... Itterby. 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 <laughs> Itterberg. I give up, guys. Too many strange vowels and sounds. And one thing you should give up on is Keith and his music segment. Take it away, Keith. Wow, so we're finally talking about this country that I have like totally not any sort of bias towards. Oh wait, hold on, I think I'm forgetting something. Whee! I hope everybody recognizes my favorite Swedish band right here. Let's talk about Sweden, shall we? Technically, Sweden doesn't have a national anthem. So they have this one song, it's called Du Gama Du Fria. I guess it's the de facto anthem, but not the official one. There's tons of really great Swedish folk songs accompanied by the Swedish nickel harp. Kind of looks like a keyboard mixed with like a violin. Who likes Strandberg guitars? I do. Just so many great guitar players. Per Nelson, greatest guitar player, I think, out of Sweden. Um, there's also English Ingve Malmsteen, Ola Ogland, Michael Ackerfeld. I don't understand why Scandinavia has produced some of the world's greatest guitar players. <laughs> Anyways, Sweden has yeah. also a very pop-centric side. Who doesn't know ABBA? I want to be a dancing queen. ABBA won in 1974 for the Eurovision contest. Also, now ABBA's actually going to be making a new album after doing 40 years of basically nothing. Since then, Sweden has been kind of the pioneers of like electro pop and dance music. More more well-known artists might be like Avicii, the Carnigans, Swedish House Mafia, Roxette. Funny thing is, is, a lot of American pop songs were written by Swedes. Max Martin has hundreds of songs. Before I go, some of the bands that I really do enjoy are Opeth, Meshuga, Pain of Salvation, Sabaton, uh, there's Beardfish. I wish I could name them all. Anyways, <laughs> you guys have a great one. Love y'all.
Thank you, Keith. Any music uh, suggestions for Swedish music? Robin. She has a, she's a great musician. Benjamin Ingrosso is killing it. Well, uh, oh, and, uh, speaking of which, Carolina is a musician and uh, an artist, and uh, you can follow her Spotify at this link right here. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will promote it. I will promote your Spotify. Don't be all Logum or Yantalo and whatever that is on me. You got to promote yourself. This is America. So far, released three Swedish songs, one English one. You right. want to promote anything? You have a website? Anything? No. You were in a Norwegian movie and it got an Emmy Award. Yes. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Yeah, your music has touched the world in so many ways. And another way Sweden has made its name across the world is by interacting with it. So let's move on to the friend zone. Now, Sweden has an interesting way of dealing with the rest of the world. They kind of have a hands-off, unless really necessary, approach to international conflict. For one, their security doctrine states that they have a non-partisan stance in regards to military alliances. However, it permits cooperation with threats against peace security with their military. Yes, Sweden has a military. Nonetheless, they joined the EU in 1995, which some criticized as being against neutrality, but Sweden like decided it. to see it as an extension of economic activity that had already been going on with the EU. And they also hold the right to not participate in EU defense. Today, they have 79 embassies abroad on all inhabited continents. In Asia, Iraq actually has had relations way before conflict years, dating back to the 30s when members of the royal family visited Baghdad to see King Ghazi of Iraq. In the 80s, Swedish companies opened up in Iraq, trade was developing well for a while, and after conflict years, many Iraqis chose Sweden as their destination as refugees. The USA and Canada have always been close, as the US has the largest Swedish diaspora community at over 4 million people most heavily concentrated in Minnesota, Canada having just about half a million with a huge community in Manitoba. Between 1820 to 1930, about 1.3 million Swedes immigrated to the Americas, which was at that time about one third of the entire country. There was some severe famine in Sweden of 1800s. I, I can't really re remember which time period, but it was like a really shitty year. Uh, people were starving to death. The crops wasn't growing. It was really bad. 1.3 million Swedes just said, I'm out of here. I went to United States of America. Country. And today, these nations and not Canada. only had a close historical bond, but in almost every diplomatic measure, aside from military conflict, they've cooperated. Bringing it closer to home, Sweden is actually one of the top donors of Moldova in regards to aid and development. They set a strategy of cooperation in 2007, which gives 11 million euros dedicated to good governance, economy, and rural development. Now we go even closer to the inner circle, the Nordics. Every single one of these five nations and their territories has an opinion about Sweden, and the gossip is heavy. Finland is of course really close as for about 600 years they were actually a part of sweden and today <laughs> yeah. Finns are one of the largest non-swedish communities with a protected language and pockets throughout the country for iceland it's like eh we're cool with them nothing against them they talk like our ancient norse ancestors but otherwise they're totally our distant cousins then we get to the last two denmark and norway now here's the thing each one kind of has a small historical gripe with sweden denmark oh well, if you still hear one minute left you gotta write still here, Recky. Let me know. And of course, if you're a channel member, use two of those emojis still here. Let me know. You guys are hanging around. Mark, as you know, has had more wars with Sweden than any two nations on Earth, constantly fighting over influence for Northern Europe. Norway yeah. was kind of pissed that Sweden's neutrality prevented them from intervening in war times when they thought the Swedish were, like, really close, and Norway was even part of Sweden. This was especially evident in World War II. It was, like, the moment of tension. Nonetheless, at the end of the day, you cannot separate the Scandinavian trio. They just get each other too well. They share too much, they have the same general Scandinavian mind, Minds. They have that Viking blood. They are truly people of the North. After the insults have been hurled, they will probably say, okay, yeah, yeah, we love each other. Denmark and Sweden, though, will probably first hug Norway before hugging each other. But otherwise, yeah, inseparable trio. All right. And in conclusion, you are the Swedes. I'm going to step out, hold the flag in the background while you speak freely from the heart. I want to say in conclusion, Sweden is a beautiful country with beautiful nature, beautiful architecture, if we haven't mentioned that just yet. Yeah. And like we mentioned, if you meet a Swedish person he or she might be a little reprehend like little bit hmm I'm not sure about you but lead on with a smile and some love and you'll get the exact same back I promise you I like that that was good <laughs> <laughs> all right well thank you guys so much for being in this episode thank you. and stay tuned Switzerland all right let's uh let's go back here wow that's really bright I don't know what the 
Christ is this? Either way, uh, it was an amazing video. I'm not going to say in any way that it was something wrong with it. It wasn't. It was, uh, it was pretty good. I enjoyed everything with it. And uh, I got to Google the uh, Alemanset because I got really insecure if I had it correctly. And I'm sorry I look like a ghost for the most of the time, but as you can see, it's getting dark here in Sweden, even though it's just uh, 6.30 here. It's getting really dark. It's a long video. Thank you for sticking around if you did. I will see that in the comment section. Smack the like, and of course, hit that subscribe if you want to become one of the members or uh, Patreon. Well, check out the Patreon link in the, in the comment section. Of course, click going to become a member. Other than that, I'm Reiki. You stay safe.